This is the third and final video in a series about getting around the speed bottleneck that the teletype caused when using it as the console with this Altair 680 computer. Now, if you haven't watched those first two videos, I'd really recommend watching those first. I'll be referring to material in those videos as we go through the video here today, and it would be simpler if you'd already seen those. To make it easy to find those videos, I put links to them in the description field uh, for this video. Now, in the first two videos, we got rid of the teletype itself by using the CRT console as our, excuse me, CRT terminal as our console, and this high speed reader punch as our paper tape functions. We then combine those two into a single serial port using this DB25 switch. That makes it look sort of like a teletype to the Altair computer and to the software. And with this hardware configuration and a few fairly minor patches to the software, we were able to get the assembler editor package and basic fully functional on this computer using this hardware configuration. And as expected, it provides quite a speed improvement. Um, with the teletype, it took us about 35 minutes to load Altair Basic or the Assembler Editor package. With this high-speed reader, we can load that in about 50 seconds, less than a minute. So that's a good 30 to 40 times improvement in speed. Likewise, when we load a program into the Assembler Editor or we load a program into Basic, that also loads 30 to 40 times faster. So that's just a great improvement. Punching tapes is faster too, not as dramatic. It's about five times faster with the way we set it up, but that's a good improvement as well. So overall, this is a great way to um, eliminate the teletype. I mean, it's still paper tape. Paper tape's still a bit inconvenient, but it's a lot better than using the teletype. Because in addition to just being faster for loading and punching, once you're up and running, using a CRT terminal at 9600 baud is much quieter and much easier for editing programs, running them, debugging than it is to do that on a teletype. So all around, it's a great solution. However, I'm not really quite happy with it, and that's because I don't like having to use this AB switch. I find it cumbersome, error-prone, at least in my old age, and independent of switching, there's also issues with the fact that the data is coming to and from the punch through the console port that causes accidental punching or mitts punching, and I won't go into the details of that, but if I could move this punch to its own dedicated serial port, make the punch reader a dedicated mass storage device, all those problems would go away. Um, and it would be a much cleaner solution. So that's what I want to do in today's video. To get a serial port to use with a high speed reader and punch by itself, I had to add another board inside this computer. Use this board you see right here. This is the 68 UIO. This is made by MIT specifically for this Altair 680 computer. It's got uh, parallel ports as well as serial ports on it. You see the big 40 pin ICs. Those are a couple of 6820 uh, PIAs for a parallel port. And up in the upper right, that 24 pin chip you see, that is a 6850 UART. That's the exact same UART or ACIA used down on the motherboard. So the uh, code that we've already written will be easily transferred to run this port as well. Now, over here on the left, you can see the actual connection that comes out of the 6850. It's gone through the drivers and the receivers there, and it goes to our DB25 in the back. One nice thing about this board is that the handshake lines from the 6850 are all brought out through this connector. If you look here, you can see I have four wires in here instead of just three. I've got transmit, receive, and a handshake line from the um, printer without the, uh, the punch. That handshake line runs to CTS on the 6850, and that allows the punch to throttle the output from our computer, as opposed to us having to put in a fixed delay loop. As you might recall, on the motherboard, none of the handshake lines from the UART are brought to the rear panel. So we had to put in a delay loop to keep the punch output rate to below 50 characters per second, which is the target I was shooting for for uh, the punch. Now, with the handshake line, the punch itself can throttle the computer. It does it automatically with that CTS line. No new software is needed. And the nice thing about that is the punch can then optimize reception of data so that its punch motor all stays in sync with the data, and it's the most efficient way to punch. Plus, if you had punches that ran at different speeds, they'll just automatically work, as opposed to being forced to run a fixed rate that I chose in the software. So, for example, this particular punch actually can run at 75 characters per second, not the 50 characters per second that I limited it to. I did that because I have another hobbyist that is also doing this project with me, 
and his punch is good for 50 characters per second, so I had to throttle it in software to match that. But with this board, we will have the um, punch throttle itself, so that's a good, uh, good way to have this work. All right, another advantage of using all this is we no longer have that AB switch, obviously. We no longer have to have the three second delay at the start or the end of a punch operation. And we don't have to have the delay in the software between each character. So it'll make the patches a little bit simpler. Now when it comes to the patches, I'm not gonna go into detail though, in detail in the video today on those. You can go up to a link I provided in the description if you want to see the patches, but they're very, very similar to before. Basically, it has the exact same hooks into the assembler editor or into BASIC um, where you're going to punch a tape. It has a hook, has to switch over to this port. When the punch is done, then it switches back to the main port. Same in BASIC as it is in the assembler editor. Uh, but if you want to see the details of those, you can go take a look at those uh, at the link provided in the description. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and just do some demos. I'm going to run the assembler editor first, and then we'll do BASIC later. Until now, we've been loading programs primarily using the L command from the monitor. This loads S record files through the console serial port. However, now we want to load through the serial port on this UIO board that we just looked at. So the L command's not going to work. And this is the same problem it's had when they introduced the cassette interface board, because that was loading through the UART on the cassette interface and not through the console. In that case, they provided an EEPROM with the cassette interface board installed into an empty socket on the motherboard at FD100, and if you jump to FD100, it did an L command through the cassette interface. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I've made an EEPROM at FD100, and when you jump to it, it loads uh, S record files through the serial port on the UIO, which of course will be our reader. Now that doesn't use the whole EEPROM, so in the upper half of the EEPROM, starting at FD80, I put a binary loader that loads the binary files that I demonstrated in the last video. These are the binary files that have a checksum every 256 bytes or so that look like the, or basically the same as the binary files used for the Altair 8800 for their cassette and paper tapes. And it's a much more efficient way to store large files than it is to use S records. Here over on the left, you see the editor assembler in um, S record format. And then over on the right is the same data but in the binary format. So it's about one third the length and it's gonna load a lot quicker. All right, so let's go ahead and get that going. I'm gonna load the uh, smaller version here into the reader. And then I'll jump to, um, let me see if I can get around this tripod. Hold on, I'm not close enough at the moment. Jump to FD80 instead of uh, FD100 because I'm doing the binary and hit read. And off it goes. Now this loads in about 20 seconds. So uh, pretty darn quick compared to 35 minutes. So we're about 90 times faster than it used to be to load the editor assembler. So that's, of course, a, an absolutely great change. And when this is done, it'll automatically jump to and start the editor assembler. We'll see that pop up here on the screen in a second. It's doing a memory check. There it is, up and running. All right, now we still do have this problem on the floor. And I'm going to have to clean that up so I don't step on it. But when, I, when I'm back, we'll, uh, we'll continue this process. All right, so I have that mess cleaned up off the floor, so now we can continue working. Let's go ahead and load that same Hello World program that we did before. To do that, you type I to input data. Put this Hello World tape in. This is the source file. And just hit read. We see it echo onto the screen. All right, so there's the whole program. Now, last time we changed the entry address from 5,000 to 3,000 because we only had 16K of memory, uh, but I got 32K in here, so I'm just gonna leave that at 5,000. Let's go ahead and change that Altair 680 to say hello world instead. Instead, so Altair 680, change that to hello world. All right, so there's our updated program. We wanna make sure it works. We'll go to the assembler. Run the first pass, run the second pass of the listing. Looks good. Exit to the monitor and run it. Jump to 5000. There's our hello world. Okay, so we've made some changes. Everything looks good. Jump back into the editor. And now let's say we wanted to save that tape. 
Well, that's very easy now. I just use the E command, which is um, use the end a edit session and punch the tape. See the punch fires up. Punches it out for us. It has a leader for us. It has some trailer on the end. And um, there's our source file all saved. And now let's say we wanted to generate a tape that we could um, we could use to um, run the program without having to assemble it or anything. So just an S record tape. So we'll go to the assembler, run the first pass. And now we want to do a 2T instead of uh, getting the source file out. This will get us the binary, or excuse me, the S record file out. So there's that, just as simple as that. All right, so now let's say we wanted to go ahead and run that just to prove it all worked. Let me go ahead and uh, zoom way back. Turn off the computer. So everything's gone. Turn it on. Give it a reset. Put our tape in. Now this is an S record file, so I'm going to want to jump to FD100. Jump FD100. We'll do the read, and then you just hit read on the reader on the reader, and then we're in. It came back to our dot prompt. I can jump to 5,000. There's a hello world. All right, so that works really nice compared to having to use the AB switch, and of course, really nice compared to the teletype. Uh, so this mass storage device is just online, ready to read and write whenever we want without having to do any switching. Um, works very quick and easy for us. Very nice setup here in the assembler now. Let's go ahead and do a quick demo of basic. Now we're going to repeat this process or the quick demonstration of loading our patch basic for using this reader punch with the UIO. As you can see here I've already got the tape loaded. This is the binary tape of basic. So to load that we jump to FD80 and then hit read. And again, this reads in about 20 seconds, just like it did with the editor assembler. And again, that's about 90 times faster than it was back in the uh, teletype configuration. And when that's done, it will go ahead and jump to basic and we'll see that pop up on the screen here in just a second. All right, there it is with our memory size pump, uh, prompt. And yes, of course, again, I have this mess on the floor. So let me get that cleaned up and out of my way. And then we'll come back to this memory size prompt and finish up. All right, let's go ahead and finish up the uh, startup here. Just slit it size memory. Use the default terminal width, and we can say yes to that. And of course, we're running the cassette version here, like we said. The C load, C save commands will go to our reader punch. And we can just see everything's working here. It looks good. All right, so one of the first things you would probably do when you uh, got up basic booted is now load some program you want to run. And I have a little program here, um, just a prime program just kind of like as a little benchmark and I'll stick this into the reader and type C load and P for primes although frankly it doesn't really matter because I set it to ignore that in the patch it just makes life easier so you hit return on the C load and read it in simple as that we got our prompt back as you can see here and there's the program all loaded and we of course can run it so getting basic up is a matter of 20 seconds, loading a program to run just a few more seconds, even something bigger like Lunar Lander or Chase or something like that would load in 10, 15 seconds. So this is a pretty good setup for loading in basic and running programs. Now let's say you wanted to do your own program. I'll do my usual here. Works. All right, now let's say you wanted to save that. All you have to do is just get back so we can see it. Type C save. Give it a name. Well, it doesn't really even matter. That's all there is to it. We got our program off the tape, complete with leader and trailer at the end. Super simple. Um, let's just prove that it works. We'll go ahead and do a new. Let's C load it.
All right, hit return on the load, hit read there. You can see it's back. And there's our program ready to run again. All right, so that does it. Super simple, super fast. Um, very nice having this on a dedicated serial port and acting as a dedicated mass storage device. Getting rid of all the AV switching and the timing and all that. This is a very nice system. It basically works just like the cassette would work, except uh, it's much faster than cassette in reality. Uh, a little more cumbersome with all the paper tape though, so there's always a trade-off. Um, so that does it for this sequence of videos. Now, I had the cassette interface was available for the Altair uh, basic program, but they never did do it for the assembler editor, as far as I can tell. And so you're pretty much stuck with paper tape on that. So I think what I might do in the next video is show how we can get the assembler editor working with the cassette interface that they never did offer back in the old days. With all this patchwork we've been doing and digging into the assembler editor and basic, I'm now real familiar with what it would take to get that assembler editor to work, just like the UIO made this punch work, except now instead of going to and from the paper tape reader, I'll make it come to and from cassette. So I think I'll do that for the next video is create a cassette basic, excuse me, a cassette version of the assembler editor um, to round out this Altair 680 as if it had existed in the old days.